Hi and welcome back to Econ Stay Trader. Today we're going to break another pound USD uh, GU uh, trade on the ICT 2022 mentorship. Um, as you know, I trade ICT pretty much every day and uh, I have done since January, which is all green days, which is absolutely insane. And uh, today we're going to break down a trade that was quite a tricky trade. It started on yesterday. It started on Tuesday. Um, I was going long on the pound dollar uh, and it did push down uh, quite heavily. So I had to uh, bring in my best trading in terms of repositioning. Even though my the price was going against me, I didn't go in huge draw drawdown. And I think that was due to um, being patient and waiting when to add into positions where I was comfortable in uh, going in. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about that and why I held it overnight was because I wasn't so exposed. Yes, we had uh, interest rate announcements in the following day at seven o'clock. Um, and that, as we're going to see, it went to pit perfect to where I wanted to go for my profit. Um, and we're going to talk about entry, execution, the liquidity, talking about bias on the daily, uh, maybe the news a little bit. Um, and our progress. If you like all this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. About 50% of people who watch the, the videos are not subscribed. So make sure you subscribe uh, as it helps the channel build a bit of a, a community and I'm um, getting to know a lot of you and it's, uh, it's some, becoming something really that I'm passionate about and I wanna continue to provide this information to you guys. So we're gonna jump straight onto the, as we always do, straight onto the MT5. Okay, and this is the summary of the trades. We didn't have too many repositions. I was quite happy with that. We had two, four, six trades. So total of two repositions. Um, we made $987. So it was 1017 after commissions. Um, really good. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna trade today because this has pretty much paid me for two days, especially because the Fed announcements are coming in the afternoon during the New York session. And it's gonna be very, very volatile. Uh, and as you can see, even from the inflation, when the inflation was announced that um, the UK has jumped up to 10%, the price skyrocketed up. Um, and we're gonna see that into our trade today. So I'm gonna place my best position, which was 121949, 122612, and the reposition uh, in between those. And we're gonna see that on the chart as we flick over now. So here we are on the pound dollar. Um, if you're new to the channel, you won't be used to this, uh, this information, but what we're gonna see is we're gonna, I'm not gonna clear the chart just because I wanna show you uh, everything that we're looking at. What we're gonna do straight away is jump onto the daily. And for the new people here, we're gonna show you how I import the information of the previous daily high and previous daily low. So what we're gonna do, you can go, this is a little tip a uh, big shout out to Trevor because I use this daily now. You can highlight and hide everything from this tree. So let's say I want to take out all these trend lines and I just want to use like the boxes, take them all out. I can just hide them. As you can see, I'm hiding this information here um, and I'm hiding the previous daily high and the previous daily low and the equilibrium line, which you can see there. So this was the, the previous daily high would be from Monday. Because this trade, even though I closed today, it started on Monday, um, it started on Tuesday. So we take the previous day as the previous daily high and the previous daily low. So what we're gonna do is I, I use the magnet and I take this line and this line, if you're wondering which one it is, is the horizontal ray. And then on the horizontal ray, I can double click and go on to uh, style and I've got my templates which I can put my daily high and my daily low. I also use a horizontal line for the equilibrium and you can get this 50 by drawing something on the charts that would give you the 50 level between the previous daily high and the previous daily low. Um, and that is there, as you can see, it's a little bit off. Maybe this line is a little bit lower, there we go. Um, that's the 50%. And that is set in stone. So when um, I've analyzed this and I'm in the trade, 
This is a good question that is going to come. I'm going to preempt this question because this trade has gone on for two days. On the second day, do I add the previous daily high of the Tuesday? And um, if I'm on Wednesday, the answer is no, because you're already in the trade and your analysis is based from the previous daily high of the Monday session. So these moves, as soon as you're in, until you kill the trade, you don't look at the previous uh, information. That's me personally. Um, so this is the, uh, uh, as you know from ICT, this is the premium price above here, discounted price below here. Um, this is gonna give you sort of an indication of what price is doing. Now, why did I go long on a day where the price was still in the previous daily high? So I traded this um, in the pre-market, so about six o'clock. The price was, uh, let's take the replay out. And we were looking around this area here. This is a very rare for me from this position to be going long. But I was convinced that the bias was to take the previous high liquidity. The indications of the week, the, the pound was being pushing higher and higher and higher. And on the daily, as we know, as we were going to look at it on now, but you should remember that we have the previous daily highs, the equal highs. And the price was showing indications that there's going to be a draw to liquidity around that area. Now, did that happen and does it need to happen for my trade? No. That's just going to give me the bias for the entry on the 15 minute candles that I'm trading on now. Now, did I find a setup that I wanted to get in? Yes. Was it the best setup? Um, I thought it would be, but obviously the price crashed down, so it wasn't. Did I panic around this area? The only thing that changed in terms of I would do repositioning, and it's something that I manage my trade with, um, and you can see it here, that was my first reposition. I normally do it earlier. I don't let the price go, the, my first entries um, go so far down before I enter with my uh, second positions. Um, so what I wanted to do is I wanted the price, even though I was going long from here, I let the price uh, breathe quite a bit because I knew that it can very easily, if I get this wrong, come and retest the previous daily low. So if that had happened, and I had positioned, let's say, two or three, three positions here, that I would have to do with 300 pips. And that is a huge amount that would have taken me out. Um, so I wouldn't want to do that. And then what I did, I waited for the price to come below the equilibrium. And then I didn't change my bias just because the price was selling off. My bias was long. I was just waiting for an opportunity to go in. And we found there was opportunity. Um, when it broke the equilibrium, especially when it came down and retest these fair value gaps on this side here from this move. Now, I did use my FIB, and FIB is something that I learned from the Scruffy Trader uh, in terms of uh, how to manage in and out of trades. So if you don't know who he is, make sure you go and follow his channel. He is a great trader and he has so much uh, information available there that will make you a better consistent trader and that's helped me past challenges and build up my knowledge up to the point where I met, uh, found the ICT uh, trading. So a combination of that is definitely um, evolved my trading but let's see a lot of people would take this fib here from the low which was actually the previous daily high to that top and trade on that nothing wrong with that my fib was taken from this swing high here low here to the top now why i did that on the one hour and the reason is because this move here has had a retracement all the way to the 61a if we add a fib here from this low to that high, we can see the price came and touched the 61A. So in FIB language, that price has retraced and been priced in. Um, so that's why I moved to the next one and pulled the price from this candle here all the way up. And we saw how nicely it respected uh, these areas here. Let's look now why my bias was long. And we're gonna do that on the, um, 
we're going to start from the daily and then we're going to go down the uh, time frames to see what we were seeing to go long first we had this push from the one uh, back from the 118 all the way up retraced push back up fill this fair value gap here a bit of price action we had this fib here touched the fib pushed up took out liquidity above these highs here right there now there's two things that can happen here at this position one you can be short after this liquidity draw to take a position into this um, or we can have a push to retrace above the bigger liquidity that's above the daily equal highs above here so let's label that like we normally do buy side liquidity and this one here would also be buy side liquidity now we we have seen quite a bullish move on the pound dollar and it took out the highs here took out the highs here now took out this highs there haven't been from this area here if we take from the beginning of 7th of march up to the candles here this red zone here there's only three red candles so there has been the signs of um a bullish move in terms of if you take it from the 7th of march you did you do have opportunities to make like you've seen from my trading you make money on the downside and the upside there's we are coming to a level and as we are coming higher and higher up towards this buy side liquidity it's highly likely that the price will go and retrace and take the take the liquidity out of this before it either comes down to fill this fair value gap on the uh, daily or it's going to make a move to the upper side but that's more long term that's going to take months to see what if that's going to happen However, as we are trading up higher and higher and higher, this liquidity draw is becoming more and more available. And as we know, like from ICT, these areas like to be, there's going to be heavily, heavily, heavily uh, positions, stops here from profits from this move. We, people wouldn't want to lose more money if the price comes and retraced up here. So as we are getting closer to that, I am I'm moving towards a more bullish side on the pound um, and I'm taking that into account, this big daily draw, because the next big draw is down here below these uh, highs here to come into crash towards the areas of the retracement of that fair value gap. So this, this pull here is going to be your sell side liquidity. As you can see, and even if you want to do like where are we at how far are we from this to this we are we are above 61 percent so we're trading around 70 percent of this move so the draw towards that upper side is more likely than to happen before the draw to this sell side liquidity and that's something that you can take into account when you're coming into the trades it doesn't mean that you're going to be bullish every day you need to look at the charts freshly every day you just have that in back in your mind and you're saying okay this is where we are now because for that to actually push all the way up there and take it out remember we had these fair value gaps here that got filled and it needs to break these highs so it's, it's still a target that is not easily uh, completed however we are pushing above that area and we're moving into that so that was something that i had in mind going into the charts then we would go down into the four hour and we can see a little bit clearly what's happened here we've had a price that pushed down this is the big move retraced into this fair value gap here to the pip pretty much came back down took out liquidity above here pushed down took out sell side liquidity below this line here comes back up fills this fair value gap here pushed down fails to break this and fails to break the highs of this this is when you have liquidity draws within a range um, so that's when you don't know it's hard to predict if this is going to come down and break there or break up here you have to wait for a break of the move and you can see it did that three times didn't break the low didn't break the high didn't break the low didn't break the high 
that's telling you that's this consolidating a move is coming and we had that move here now it took the lows of this took out sell side liquidity around here on the four hour and pushed up consolidated retraced into the fair value gaps and pushed higher took out liquidity above these areas here and it started retracing and my bias was that we're going to be ret retracing upwards towards the buy side liquidity that we talked about to fill fair value gaps on this area here now the question i had to answer was how far down is this going to retrace before we hit the upper side of those liquidity draws and that is a tough one so we go down the lines of the one hour we started remember on the daily and now we're breaking it down four hour coming down and this is when i start drawing the fib to identify areas where the price can come back to retest we came back to the 23 when it closes the 23 it's it's highly likely that it's going to come back down to the 50 percent I got in into this fair value gap here and you can see that that from that wick to that wick I thought that's going to be a shallow retracement pushing even higher to the liquidity because if you think that I'm looking for um, 30 pips I was looking for a position from this price here to the highs of that buy side liquidity here so that was my play now you have a lot of bullish buying backing you up on this so if you get it wrong it's not like we're looking for the top to reverse there's a lot of interest long interest on the pound dollar that started from these lows here retraced repositioned and pushed higher we also had that gap if you remember so even if you get it wrong and you're literally buying the top if you want there's going to be opportunities for you to retrace the price the, the selling price to come back up into um into profit and that's what i do however this is why repositioning works for me whatever risk you're you're trading and how you're managing your risk you need to take that into account every day is not the same i can't take the same risk that i take every that's why i don't do risk management i can't take the same risk from buying in a premium price with the same risk of buying down here what's more risky obviously this is riskier because the price can definitely come and retrace down to the previous daily lows so what i'm trying to say is that you can't use the same risk reward every single day that, that it's impossible things change there was interest rate then wednesday morning if that wasn't into account that changes your whole risk management because that moved 40 pips like this um so that being said i had to risk manage this position today's trade not tuesday when monday's trade is completely different story so i entered here that was my worst entry if we go down to the one minute this is how the weekly i know the candles and you can't see the candles very clearly but you can see the pattern that's what we're looking for here we had a strong rejection area around this area here and if we go on to our worst entry that broke heavily came down retraced into that 38 23 to 38 and then started showing signs of going higher we broke the highs here and i was interested around this area and if we take our entry so we broke the highs potentially i could have get a, a gotten uh, at this price i didn't get into this price i got into this break fair value gap got filled here all these areas would have given me an entry for longs right if you were short these areas would have given you this fair value gap would have given you an opportunity to go short here and these break shorts here shorts here but for the long side you had this opportunity on this fair value gap here which i didn't take to the pip all the way up that would have given you 10 pips um, and then you had this fair value gap let's let's do this is good practice to identify fair values this is another fair value here that you would have get gotten in 
Next one pushed higher, broke the highs of this, retraced, fair value gap there, could have entered there. Came down, broke the highs of this, fair value gap there. That's where I got in. So we had one break, two breaks, three breaks, four breaks, and then I got in. As you can tell, normally I get in on the first one, uh, but this was, I was getting in a bit high. And I, I knew that I would be able to manage this. So I want to be involved in this push higher. This was my idea that it's gonna come up to these points here on the previous daily high. And obviously I traded up into, my entry was pretty much on the high of the move. So we're gonna see that. My entry was good. However, I do have slippage these days. I'm not sure what's going on. There's a little bit more slippage happening. Three pip slippage, not very good. Maybe the pre-market, you get a bit more slippage because uh, that was um, 7 a.m. Uh, in the UK. Actually, it was six, some, six o'clock, something around there that I got in. Um, so then that came up for like three pips. So I was $30 up and then came down, pushed down, pushed down. When I see this, do I get scared? No, because I am, I've, I've taken my idea from my daily. I'm not worried about the next one minute and two minutes. Yes, I want to get my profit early, but I know that there's a possibility, worst case possibility, this can come all the way down here to break the previous daily highs. So 92 pips. So my idea is not based anything around this here. As you can see, my worst position is there. And if we zoom out, we're gonna see my reposition. My second reposition is down here, Re uh, equ equilibrium. And I, I break the price and reposition all the way down to my best price. So I, I was very patient and that's something that I'm really gonna take into account. Yes, it didn't give me, I, if I was more, if I, if I was impatient and I, I got into the trade a bit quicker, the difference might have been that I would have been paid quicker, but my risk tolerance would have been a lot higher. Because as we're gonna see, and if we push the price down, the price came down. Let's say I repositioned here on this draw of liquidity. Here I would be break even, and there I would probably be paid. But, I don't mind that because the price action wasn't showing indication on the upper side after my entry. Broke the lows here, filled in fair value gaps. This is showing pressure to the downside. Especially, so this would have retraced all the way back up to my original price and that would have been paid. But obviously, like I mentioned now, I'm not interested in this area to get in. Why? Because if I get this wrong, now I have two positions that I have to deal with and I definitely need to get that position right to get this one out. So I'm waiting. Comes down, pushes down into the 50%. Now this is an area where I was interested and I started thinking about repositioning. Is this going to be the final push that we're going to be going on to the upper side? And as you can see, we had a bit of reaction up to there. Push back down, consolidated for a long time, and then broke lower. What did it take? The lows of this. Next target is the 61%. Let's see how quickly it did it. So now we're getting close to the end of the London kill zone. So let's analyze a little bit what happened in the London kill zone. The London took out the highs of the Tokyo session and then distributed the price where it wanted to go. Came back up, took out liquidity above this area here, and now it's gonna push lower. So after the London session, the price consolidated around between the 23 and 20, uh, 38 of the Fibonacci tra retracement that we looked at. Came back up at this. So you can tell that my risk here is very low. It's really close to the up of this. So I was quite happy. Uh, to hold this for a long time um, even though it was after the London kill zone we can see that the price was consolidating around the area that I was so I knew that the price wasn't too bad of my entry 
but I was anticipating a push down definitely to equilibrium or even lower to the previous daily high as worst case scenario. So when the price comes down, and you can see here my reposition eventually came down. 61 got triggered, came down, 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 and now this is the area, 768, boom. This is where I am now saying this is gonna be the bottom of the move. And what my plan is to reposition this trade into the top of this. Where do I am, where am I expecting the price to go? Above the previous daily highs, above here. So what I need this position is to come and take out this position. And we're looking at, uh, in terms of pips, 40 pips, so like $400 um, uh, from this position here. And then we want this to reposition up. Now these repositions for my best price from here to here was only 20 or 17 pips reposition. And that's what we did. So we traded, got an entry here from this break of the highs. It retraced, that gave me the entry there. So now I'm in this trade, anticipating the price to go higher. Comes down, doesn't break the previous daily lows. Remember, I am interested in going long. So I need to manage this position here. I'm not worried about this one because this is the eventually going to be triggered when I get my profit. All I'm focused on is this position here. How can I manage out of this position? And I entered on this pull here, retraced, gave me a fill, broke the lows. Let's look at price action, what is done. So as we can see, pushed up, came up, filled that fair value gap, came down, created, um, took out the liquidity below this swing low, and then showed signs on the upper side. So this is uh, London, uh, New York sessions now. Let's add the New York in. So as you can see, this is late into the New York session. I knew I'm gonna be trading this uh, all day. Uh, you do get these trades. Now this price that I got in here, the best trade, took out this. Soon as I got here, I was very comfortable with the trade because at the moment we have a best price here, worst price here. So if we take the measurement to our, from the best price to the worst price, equilibrium is where I'm going to be break even. Um, so I was really happy with this position uh, in this moment of time. Can the price come down and break the previous daily lows? Yes. Um, can I uh, add it after into that? Yes. And that's what my reposition has given me is that ability, and if we take the replay out, is giving me that ability in this position to trade it down. Obviously, we were a bit early into the trade, but as you can see, my idea of the price going up to the liquidity grab was perfect. And we that's why I can't trade the sniper approach of getting in, out to the pip and having three pip um, stop loss, that's not me, I can't do this. I'm more comfortable with doing my repositioning method um, because I'm happy with that. I can do, I know, understand this. If you are more comfortable with waiting for this move and doing a three pip uh, stop loss around this area here and going higher, then that's fine as well. We have to find what works for us and we're not all the same and my repositioning method um, don't ask me because I, I can't really explain it to you. Um, I'm trying to give you an understanding of what I'm doing, but it's my way of trading and it works for me. It's If you want a, a general understanding about it, uh, the closest thing to it would be something that Scruffy does. Uh, he does, uh, he calls it madness. However, I don't add in fixed positions and I don't always let the, the trades run. I kill positions. So I'm starting with one position and then I'm trying to reposition it in a better price. Um, it's, it's, it's very different, so don't mix the two. It will, you will get very confused if you try and mix. I was on the chat today because I'm in the Scruffy squad. Um, someone mentioned that, you know, I'm doing a bit of Scruffy madness, I do a repositioning. 
don't do that you can't mix the two they're different ways of trading and different ways of managing the trade so make sure you stick with one or what works for you don't try and bring um, different ideas together it might work for you but you have to really understand both and make them your own if you don't understand what I'm doing or if you don't understand how madness works don't try and mix the th two things together or with ICT if you try and do what I do and you add a three pip um, uh, stop loss that's going to be taken out in any second so you have to understand and know uh, what works for you and then we had the fed announcement here at seven o'clock and that pretty much gave me uh the two days of worth of profit 900 um into that so i was super happy obviously that's gone on and it's going higher and higher and higher and i would have made huge amounts of profit am i worried about that absolutely no i would have made like 94 pips and 94 plus the reposition uh, sorry, the uh, original, which would have killed. Uh, it would have been 94 pips um, times two. So we would have made a lot, a lot of money. But I wasn't worried. I'm paid and news is coming up in the afternoon, Fed announcements. Uh, I'm not going to be trading any of that. I don't want to be involved. I want to be able to trade, get in, get out, get my price, and that's it. So let's go and see our performance. And we're going to do that by exporting our data. We're going to go onto our custom. I want to export this information. And I'm going to right click, uh, report. I want to export it in orders. And you're going to see I used a trade sync as my journal, export it as HTML, um, save it where you want. Then we're going to go on to Trade Sync. So here we are on Trade Sync. As we know from Monday, we um, we are up 5,700. And what we want to do is I've moved the camera so you can see Import Trades. Then we're going to browse and find uh, the uh, the trades that we've been exporting. If you're not sure how to do this, I've got a little video again, but I'm pretty much showing you every day. So you should be familiar with that now. That's going to take a few seconds to pull in the orders and when it's pulled the orders we're going to jump straight onto the calendar and that's going to populate our profits as we can see we are super happy with that 14 trades in this week um so and that includes three days 987 pretty much 990 dollars profit and we're running on 6700 um pretty stress-free uh we this month we haven't had a big uh, stressful trade touch wood uh, we, we want to continue that I've had all green days since January and we're going to continue that this is the best performance I've ever had um, we'll see how March finishes uh, but that will be on the five percentage five percenters funded account that will be a hundred percent win rate day win rate and um, hopefully we're going to do that on the fourth month as well so make sure you subscribe to my channel um because i do this every day and you can see all my trades i also uh post on instagram my daily routine sort of uh, you you can go and see the amazing food that we can have in bali stunning beaches there's like incredible people uh, i wouldn't recommend it more to anyone um to come to bali and experience the uh, bali life uh, or maybe you want to quit your nine to five and eventually come and trade here nearby and we can be neighbors who knows that might be happening in the near future if you are make sure you let me know on instagram um and i'll i'll hook up with you it was great to meet some of you uh well one of you uh local who was around here and uh, he's an actual musician so i might go and listen to him um uh so yeah Make sure you follow and subscribe to the channel because it helps. I know only 50% of the thousands of viewers that watch this video have forgotten to press that subscribe button. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't. And uh, we're going to catch you tomorrow for another trade. It's going to be Thursday. It's going to be volatile. So we're going to be, uh, we need to be laser focus on our bias and how we trade fair value gaps and liquidity draws if you like all that i'll see you tomorrow for another trade if you're a basketball fan 
And Adokumpo is uh, the ultimate... I'm a big fan of Yanis Adokumpo and what he represents and how he's got from nothing to being the superstar that he is now. And I, yes, I do follow the Milwaukee Bucks. So I know there were some people asking about Milwaukee. So there you go. Let's see if we can win it this year in the NBA. I've got good feelings about this. But that's basketball talk. Let's stay on the trading talk. I'll see you tomorrow for another video. Have a good one. I can't take no loss. I don't even know what it costs.